Hello guys, welcome to Players Guild, my name is Loki and today we are going to be talking about fighters in Mercenary. So Out of Cards is an amazing website where they data mined all of the fighters, uh, all of the mercenaries and other stuff uh, from Hearthstone, Hearthstone's newest game mode which is coming on October 12th. And today in the fashion of our channel we are going to be grading all of the fighters or I would say that but there is a lot of them and it takes a long time. So this is part one of Fighters Graded. So starting with our first Fighters hero is going to be Blademaster Samuro. He's a fighter orc and probably some of you remember it from Warcraft 3 when he was the first orc hero that you faced as an Arthas in Human Campaign. So Blademaster Samuro is a fighter's orc hero. At level 1 he has 2 attack and 12 health, so fairly high health. At level 15 he hits 5 attack and 40 health. And level 30 he has 10 attack and 71 health. So his health is on the lower end of the average section. His attack is fair, it's fairly high, but it is in that mid section for the melee characters. So 10 attack, fairly decent. And as for his abilities, we have his basic ability is Double Strike. It's a full speed ability that says attack an enemy. If it was damaged this turn, gain one attack and attack it again. So if this is not, uh, yeah, if this is not your first attack in a turn, this is essentially a Wind Fury attack. But the second attack also gives you that permanent attack buff. So this scales fairly nicely, every single rank of the ability gives you one more attack. So at uh, skill level 5, it's plus 5 attack and you attack it again if it has been damaged by something faster than Samuro. So you do need a specific comp uh, to get Samuro going. Because it, everyone needs to, not everyone, at least one character needs to be faster than Samuro. Um... I think there is some ways to get that. Alternatively, you can make some more slower. And this wouldn't be a good target to hit with Lich King, for example, especially on the double strike. It's a good ability. Uh, I don't think you're going to proc it very often unless you build your uh, comp around it. His second ability is Mirror Image, which is a 9 speed ability with one cooldown. You choose an enemy. Summon a copy of this merc that attacks it and dies at the end of the turn. So it essentially is hit and run. <laughs> I don't know how to say it otherwise. It's hit and run. It gives an additional target to your opponent. But it summons an exact copy of this merc. So with all the damage, with all the attack buffs and things like that. So it's a very interesting way of attacking something without taking the recoil damage. I do like this. I don't think it's going to be used on cooldown because if you can set it up so uh, his uh, double strike actually procs giving you attack, you prefer to use that every turn. But if you can't do that or if somewhere is going low or if you're trying to finish off a big melee character, mirror image might be the way to do it. Uh, the way it scales, it just reduces the speed. So rank 2 goes down to 7 speed. Rank 3 goes down to 5 speed. And rank 4 and 5 then just lose 1 speed each. So the maximum speed you get is 3. Which is actually quite fast. Uh, but that might also be detrimental. Giving that additional body on board for characters like Garrosh to proc again. Uh, that might be actually detrimental. I think this is the first time it is detrimental for an attack to be fast. Of course, dealing the damage earlier is good as well, but then your Samurai actually doesn't do anything. And his final ability is Whirling Blade. So this is a 5 speed ability with 1 cooldown. It deals 2 damage to all enemies, and Samurai gains immune this turn. So, if this attack is faster than any other attack uh, that your opponent has, essentially they can't damage Samurai. So this is actually a very interesting, so this has cooldown 1, so you can only do this every other turn. But it's a very interesting mechanic if you build this with a Lich King and slow down your opponent's whole board. Because then Whirling Blade always is going to be the fastest. And then the damage scales up 
uh, the breaking point in rank 3 is 8 damage and it goes all the way up to 10 damage so it matches his maximum attack. For his equipment, the first one we have is Honed Blade. Honed Blade is a very basic uh, equipment, we have seen it multiple times, although this one is on the lower level, which is interesting. It increases, it flat out increases the damage of one of the abilities, in this case, Whirling Blade, by up to 4. Usually we see an increase like this by up to 5. I don't know why this one is only up to 4. Might have something to do with balancing that Samura is... Uh, immune or because it's AoE but we have seen increase like that on AoE equipment as well so I'm not too sure on this one. Uh, next one is Sash of Illusion uh, where Mirror Image summons an extra copy of this merc so you summon two copies to attack twice essentially and this one I like. So if you use Sash of Illusion with a Mirror Image that means you get two attacks out of that. It's similar to Double Strike it doesn't give you attack, but also you don't take damage back and it gives you two orcs on board. Um, I think there is some interaction with self-damaging as well, because they are going to be damaged. I think Sash of Illusion might be the choice for Samura. And, oh, I might be wrong. Burning Blade is an, uh, his last equipment we have seen here. With passive, whenever this mercenary attacks, Gain plus one attack and that scales all the way up to plus four attack. So plus four attack for every attack with which means that double strike if you can get that proc'd first attack gives you four attack so you go up to 14. I'm working of course of the maximum stats. So you go up to 14 and then if it was damaged by something faster you go up to 19 you go up to 23 so it's 14 and 23 you do you do 37 damage on your first attack, plus whatever was dealt uh, with the other ability, we assume an average of about, of about 8 damage, or sorry, minimum of about 8 damage. So you do over half life point, uh, half of the life, very, very quickly. And this keeps on scaling. Okay, I might be wrong, it not, might not be Sash, it might be actually Burning Blade and go for the double strike strategy, because that's just ridiculous. We're going to protect Samura where you need or finish off some small guys. But as far as single target goes, Samura is ridiculously powerful. I like that. I really like that. He's a rare hero. Uh, and I think this is going to be the first one. I'm going to say that this rare hero is absolutely amazing. And if it's one of the three heroes we're getting, I love this. I'm going to be building this because Samura, doesn't matter if you're building melee comp or comp or whatever. He is really good he has good stats he's self-sustained you don't you don't need any support for him Hager, i might even actually say that he's an s rank and next in our tavern visits the mysterious traveler diablo himself so diablo makes its appearance in hearthstone as a fighter demon for mercenaries has an amazing stats of 3 attack and 13 health on level 1, 6 attack and 40 health on level 15, and 11 attack and 70 health on level 30. So he has low health um, when he's level 30, but high attack. So definitely something to look out for. Um, but yeah, he's not, you know, he's not under 70 yet. And he is within that range of he can be too shot by certain uh, protectors. And yeah, so his first ability is Doom Charge. It's a sp six speed ability that says attack an enemy. It ne its next ability is one speed slower. Uh, it's only for the next ability and the way it scales with every rank, it, the next ability is essentially one speed slower. So it caps up at 5 speed slower. It's a good ability, but at the same time it's just essentially I smack you in the face and then you're staggered. Yeah, it, we had a similar one, Staggering Slam or something like that. I think that one had a cooldown that was a bit faster. But this is essentially what it is. Um, It can disrupt some combos, it definitely can disrupt some row if you hit the right target, but if you have if they have two targets that can uh, proc some world, then that's not so good. 
Um, yeah. It's a, it's a decent ability. Next one is Fire Stomp, which is 6 speed, 1 cooldown fire ability that says deal 2 damage to all enemies. Repeat for each enemy that hasn't acted yet. Oh boy, this one is scary. So the way it scales, it just increases the damage. At rank 5, it caps at 8 damage. But if Diablo in any way is faster than 2 three opponents if he's faster than one opponent it's 16 damage two opponents 24 damage three opponents 32 damage that's that is a lot and if you add up to that let's say ragnaros which has fire damage and give that plus three fire damage then we have what four times three 12 more damage that's 44 damage to everyone that this can potentially be very very scary uh, but it requires your opponents to use slow abilities than Diablo if you see Diablo you are going to be trying to use fast abilities just to not proc the fire stomp I think that's about that uh, I'm not sure how good it's going to be in PvP but I can see a build where you start with Ragnaros Lich King and Diablo and just go for this Especially if your opponent has a lot of fighters or maybe some casters to counter your Ragnaros. If you can set it up well enough uh, using Lich King to delay all their casters further and then fire stomp away half of their life. I mean if they're casters then you're going to deal twice that damage to them. Which means you can one shot the casters team with Diablo. It's a strong character. And last one is Apocalypse which is another 6 speed it's very telling. It's three sixes we have seen here. It's a six speed ability with one cooldown. It's a fire ability. Choose an enemy to take critical damage from all rolls this turn. Deal four damage to them. So in this case, you want all the abilities to be used afterwards. So all of them profit from this critical damage. So critical damage is when you deal damage to... When Protector deals damage to Fighter, Fighter to Caster, and Caster to Protector, they deal double damage. This essentially turns... Uh, gives critical damage against anything. Uh, it scales up with the damage. So Breakpoint is on rank 3, it deals 10 damage, and then goes up to 12 on rank 5. So rank 3 definitely you can stop there. It's going to do a good chunk of damage because it is going to do 20 damage. So I know it says that, that it's 10 damage, but you need to remember it's going to be critical damage no matter what. And afterwards, if you have any AoE, not even AoE, die insects of Ragnarok, uh, Ragnarok? Ragnaros, close enough, uh, then that's going to do even more damage and it might be able to proc that uh, death blow, but die insects is random. That being said, it is a strong ability, and surprisingly, Diablo has only one melee ability, and he doesn't even, yeah, he doesn't reap much of benefit from the Apocalypse. He doesn't gain any attack either. Very interesting. So his first equipment is Close of Terror. This mercenary has plus one attack, Doom Charge slows the enemy by one speed more, and it scales up to... 5 attack and 3 speed uh, less for the opponent, which is alright, so it slows down by up to 8, so essentially makes someone act last. And giving that 5 attack is interesting, this is definitely a doom charge, it's a flat out increase on damage on doom charge. Next one is magma horn, or rather magma horns, which increase, increases the damage of the apocalypse. And this one increases the damage of the Apocalypse in by more than we expect. So it's by 6. Uh, Apocalypse was his last attack. Okay. So this is the one. So it essentially increases the damage by 12. So you do 32 damage with one ability. Okay. This is starting to get to a scary levels. This is a scary level of damage. And the last one is Black Soulstone. After a character dies, this mercenary gains free health. 
and this scales all the way up to 10 health. Uh, biggest jump being between rank 3 and rank 4 actually, being 3 health jump. So this doesn't say friendly ha character, so if you kill stuff he gains health. Uh, question I have, I don't think this is kept in PvE between different fights, so I don't think he's going to be gaining from that. It's just in one fight. Against token decks, it can be scary, but at the same time, not that much. No, I think definitely uh, his AoE is the scary bit. So, the Firestorm is the scary bit, because, yeah, the fire damage you can get with Ragnarok, uh, Ragnaros, and then you can match it up with Ragnaros's Die Insects. Uh, you can match it with Ragnaros' Meteor. You can essentially take apart opponent's team very, very quickly. If they're on casters, you can one-shot a good portion of them. Uh, so Diablo... Diablo requires setup. Um, it doesn't require Ragnaros. It requires slowing down your opponents. And I think Kern can do that... Uh, I know that we in part two of this video, so not in this video, in the next video, we're going to be talking about Valera, which can make Diablo faster, where Firestomp is going to actually shine. So there is lots of potential for Diablo here, and I am actually quite excited. Uh, Diablo, on at the same time, Diablo does need support. He's not self-contained. He doesn't do a lot on his own, so I think he's my grade for him is going to be A. Are you prepared for our next mercenary? Yeah, it's going to be Illidan. I couldn't stop myself from making the reference to his famous quote. You are not prepared. So Illidan is a fighter mercenary for night elves. At level 1 he has 2 attack and 12 health. At level 15 he has 5 attack and 39 health. And level 30 has only 9 attack and 69 health. Giggly. Uh, so, 69 health is actually lower than 70, which might be a bit scary. And he has fairly low attack, and we know that Illidan is going to be a melee character. So, 9 attack on the melee character doesn't inspire confidence. His basic ability is Winged Assault. It's a 4 speed ability that says attack an enemy. If it's the left or rightmost enemy, gain one attack. And this one scales by gaining up to five attack. Okay, so you attack left or rightmost enemy, become 14 attack. Uh, question is, do you get it before you attack or after you attack? I think it might be uh, before you attack, which is nice. If it's after you attack, it, it's still good, but it's not that great. But yeah, 14 attack on the first attack, it's not bad. Um, nothing more to say about this. It's, it's that outcast thing. Uh, the one thing I want to mention is that if they have a taunt and they have a taunt in the middle, that's just going to stop Illidan in his tracks. He just won't be able to pass that because he will need to attack in the middle and then he won't be gaining his attack. So one of the counters for Illidan is going to be putting a tank, uh, the taunt in the middle. And uh, next one is Outcast Attack, which is 6 speed ability with 1 cooldown. Attack the left and right most enemies. Death Blow restores 7 health to this merc. Uh, so it scales up with how much Illidan heals from himself. It goes to... Uh, at the break point it's 21 health. And at rank 3 and rank 5 he's 25 health. That is a good heal. It's just about a third of over a third of his life. He doesn't gain any attack from this, so you do need to do a couple of winged assault, uh, assaults before outcast attack does anything. The problem with this one is you attack two targets at once, which means you are getting hit back twice. I think that can be a bit scary, especially if you have such a low uh, health total as Illidan does. And his ultimate ability is Blade Dance. Deal damage equal to this Merc's uh, attack to one random enemy. And it's a 10 speed 
two cooldown fell ability. So, my guess, because this deals damage, it doesn't attack. My guess is that if you have fell damage on board, this is going to be this max attack plus that fell damage. So if he has nine attack and you have one fell damage, it's going to be ten damage to one random enemy. And the way it scales is at rank two it deals to two random enemies, at rank three it deals to three random enemies, and the speed is nine. Then at rank four it goes to eight, and rank five it goes to speed seven. So it just increases the speed. I think the only important one uh, to really get to is going to be uh, rank 3, where you can hit 3 targets because you don't increase the targets past this. And yeah, it's a good ability, but it it's not great. It doesn't have that much attack. Uh, you do need to upgrade this ability at least twice before it becomes properly useful. And it being at speed 7, I don't think it changes the breakpoints that much. Between 9 and 7, there's not that much difference. I think 5 would be more important to have than 7. And still has cooldown too, so you can only use this every 3 turns. It's nice that it's a fell ability, because you can use it uh, with some fell interactions, but it's not it's not enough fell interaction, because it's only free to, every 3 turns you can do this. For his equipment, the first one we have is Razor Fist. Which Winged Assault gains 2 more attack and it scales all the way up to 5 more attack and I love this. The, uh, Illidan is going to be smacking with that uh, Winged Assault all the time. So gaining 10 attack rather than 5 attack is absolutely amazing. It reminds me a lot of Cariel which kept gaining 10 attack every turn. I like this one. This is definitely one of my favorite equipments. Next one is Warglaive of Azinoth, his infamous glaives that were dropping from Black Temple. Outcast attack also attacks the leftmost enemy twice. Okay, so it gives you the ability to possibly kill it easier, or you just get three attacks for the price of two. I, I get it, but you're also getting hit back in the face three times. It is probably good. I'm just not seeing it anymore. It might be better PvE. I would just rather increase the attack of Illidan and just finish it with the Blades Dance. I think that's kind of what I'm looking at with Illidan. And the last one is Demon Shroud. Which passive take 2 less damage while attacking and goes all the way up to 5. Now this one is interesting. This one might be something you look at, especially with Outcast Attack. If you have something that can boost your character's attack. But I'm not sure if there is any interaction for Night Elves just yet. Um, and he's a melee character. Night Elves are mostly archers, right? Aleria, Tyrande. Sylvanas used to be a... Ah, Sylvanas was a high elf. So was Aleria, actually. Never mind. But Night Elves... Uh, Tyrande is an archer. Malfurion is a druid. Yeah, not very melee oriented. Like orcs are very melee oriented and that's shown in the gain attack to orcs. All in all, Illidan is solid, but I don't think he's great. He has a low health total. Yeah, he can uh, he can heal himself with the outcast attack, but I think he's most useful in PvE. PvP, he might have some uses that I'm not seeing at the moment. I will be theory crafting it more properly after I look at the, all the characters. But as it stands, I think I'm going to grade Illidan at B. King Crush. So King Crush is a giant dinosaur. On level 1, he has a respectable 3 attack and 12 health. So very good melee character. Level 15, he hits 6 attack and 40 health. And level 30 hits 11 attack and 72 health. So he's on that, still on that lower end of health for the melee. Uh, but 11 attack is fairly high. Uh, so it's definitely a strong melee character. 11 attack from the base. It's really nice. And probably, I mean, Mukla can give him additional attack and immunity. So that's important to remember. So his basic ability is Apex Predator. 9 speed, so very slow. Attack the lowest health enemy. 
death blow repeat this yep you can pick apart a lot of teams i think mostly pve teams are going to be picked apart by this but giving this immunity and then just apex predatoring through their stuff i can see that i can get behind this actually uh, so upgrades on this one are speed so you just find your breakpoints that are important for you and i think the breakpoint of speed 5 is going to be quite important um so you might be worth it upgrading it all the way to all the way you need to remember that it can never be faster than king bukla obviously uh next one is terrify which is a four speed ability gain plus one attack for each of your beasts attack a random enemy and this one scales very nicely it just increases the attack gain for each of your beasts so if you start on your team having two other beasts, you gain 15 attack with this. Because it doesn't say for each of your other beasts, and King Crush is a beast himself. So gaining 15 attack just like that. Yeah, that that might be a tiny bit overpowered, because he becomes 26 attack on turn 1. This doesn't have cooldown. And it also attacks at the same time, so you, it's not that you're losing anything from here. So he becomes 26, then he becomes 41, and he has potential to one-shot any caster. Okay. King Crush is scary, officially. And the last one is Devil Soar. So it summons Devil Soar with Rush. So the, uh, it's 5 speed, 1 cooldown, and Devil Soar is a beast. So one thing we can't see with uh, data mine we got here is how the tokens um, scale. I assume he gets plus six plus six, but that might be a bit much, especially on the ranks four or five. I'm not sure. Maybe he no, he's not going to end up at twelve. He's probably going to end up closer to fifteen, fifteen. That's my guess. But it all depends on the stats you're getting from the Devil Soar, if it's worth upgrading. I'm going to be... As soon as we know uh, what are the stats of the tokens, I'm going to be doing an update on is it worth it to upgrade your tokens or should you go for the equipment. Speaking of the equipment, his first equipment, equipment is Fresh Meat. Terrifier gives an additional plus one attack. And that scales all the way up to plus four. And please tell me it's not per target, it's just the total attack given. If it's the total attack given, I can live with that, although 19 attack is still ridiculous. That's what I'm going to say. Although I think we... Oh no, I think we have three beasts, because there is Mukla, there is King Crush, and I think Blink Fox is a beast. And you might run it just for the sake of it being a beast and you gaining tons of attack with King Crush. Um, that being said... Fresh meat is an alright equipment. It's flat out damage increase for a lot. Uh, Rocky Carapace. This increases the Devil Souls health. That's interesting. So you can make it up to plus 10 health. So it makes your token more resilient. So the beast actually survives. So Terrify can give more attack. That's good to know. And Flaming Claws. I think this might be the scariest of them all. Uh, because it's passively giving attack. So you don't need to use Terrify or anything. You, you just have 19 attack when you start the fight. And then you Terrify. You get that 15 attack. You add 34. Next then you add 49. And then you King Mukla and Apex Predator. Your the sh Yeah. Yeah, this is King Mukla's best friend. It's... King Crush is actually a really good character, and Beast Comp looks very interesting. Um, you can also spawn additional beasts, so technically you can get the 5 beasts on board, and technically he can get 25 attack with Terrify. Which is, as the name suggests, terrifying. That being said, King Crush is... Amazing in any beast build and is going to be graded as a Lady Anacondra. So she was one of the bosses in Wailing Caverns, I think, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, she is a fight and night elf hero. On level 1 she has 1 attack, 10 health, which is quite alright. She's definitely not a melee hero. Level 15, 3 attack, 39 health. And level 37 attack and 71 health. So she's definitely a caster. She doesn't have a lot of attack. She doesn't have almost any attack. Uh, her life total is alright. I am going... When I'm done with all of the mercenaries, I'm going to put up the graph on where different mercenaries scale on the life. That might be actually an interesting thing to see, to actually see what are the average numbers, because I was working off the fact that the mercenaries should have between 70 and 80 health. And her first ability is Serpent's Bite. It's a 5 speed nature ability. That says, deal 2 damage to a character at the end of this turn. It takes two damage. I don't understand this ability. So deals two damage twice. I think I. Mm. So the way it scales, it increases both instances of damage by one. And only deals damage at the end of this turn, so it's not like going on poison and things like that. I it might be that the second instance of damage is not technically dealt by a fighter, so it can't proc critical. Maybe. I don't I I don't understand this ability. I don't see what this ability is supposed to do. I am bemused. Okay. Her second ability is Mend Beast. It's a four speed nature ability. That says restore free health to your character. If it's a beast, also give it plus free health. Okay, so it's a beast support. It heals and it also gives the same amount of maximum health. That is actually quite strong. And breakpoint being yeah, rank free as always, eleven health, a heal and give eleven health. But uh, on level five. It actually doesn't have bad breakpoints afterwards either. So it might be worthwhile look if you're looking to use Lady Anaconda in your beast build, which I'm not sure I would. Uh, you might want to upgrade it all the way to rank 5. Because healing 15 and dealing f uh, and giving additional 15 health is not bad. And the final ability is Nightmare Viper. Which is 8 speed ability. Uh, that summons a Nightmare Viper, which is a beast. Ability has one cooldown, I think, like all tokens do. And it's a 0 3 on rank 1. Again, we don't know how the stats scale. But this minion's attack is always equal to its health, so it's like that light elemental from Priest. It's really cool. So you can increase this, uh, you can heal this and increase its health, and then subsequently increase its attack. So her manned beast on this is essentially plus 30 attack. I assume it ends up at something like 15 at most base uh, base here. So 6, 9, no, probably even less, 10? It might actually end up as a 10 attack at rank 5. A 10 10. So if it survives the turn, assuming no one used an AoE, then it can be boosted. Okay. Uh, for her equipment, first one we have Toxic Venom. Serpent's Bite deals one more damage. It scales all the way up to four more damage. Again, I'm not sure how Serpent's Bite is supposed to work. It's a very weird ability. Signet of the Wilds. Mend Beast restores health to Lady Anaconda as well, so she can heal herself while keeping the beasts healthy. Uh, yeah, this is actually amazing. I think this might be the pick for Anaconda if you ever want to use her. And the last one is Snake Snacks. I like this one. Uh, so this one increases the Nightmare Viper's health by up to 10. It's a good scaling. It's essentially plus 10 attack to the Nightmare Viper. But I think uh, 
biggest ability might be that man beast. On the other hand, making sure that the vipers can survive. No, but 10 health, I don't think is going to change that much with the certain AoEs. If you're fighting against a fire comp, for example, they're just going to burn down either way. Even if it's going to be like 25. Um. Okay. So Lady Anaconda is a decent beast support. She doesn't do an awful lot on her own. Uh, don't know how big are the Vipers, but even at max level, I don't think they're going to be that big. Because 15-15 would be a bit... Uh, maybe it wouldn't be that big, because with all the damage they take, uh, their attack is reduced. Uh, she can be decent. I don't think she's that great yet. I might be proven wrong, but as it stands right now, I think I'm going to grade her B. Murlocs! Murlocs! So, no house something can be... Oh, no Warcraft thing can be finished without Murlocs. So, in this case as well, we are going to have three Murloc mercenaries. So, the first one is Mutanus, which is a fighter Murloc with some amazing stats. So level 1 he has 3 attack and 13 health, level 15 he has 5 attack and 42 health and nothing too exciting at level 30 he has 8 attack 75 health. Now level 1 stats are really really good and really really exciting but after that his stats plummet a bit. Uh, so looking at his ability, his basic ability is devouring attack. It's 9 speed ability, attack an enemy. Death blow gain its uh, gain its attack. So that's how mutant's attacks grows. It needs to kill something. So it, this is definitely a PVE ability. I don't think you will ever get that off in PvP. As good starts as mutant's has on level one. It's yeah. Uh, the way the ability scales, it's just gain speed. So it caps at five speed at level five. His second ability is Scaly Taunt. Uh, free speed ability, gain taunt, and this takes one less damage this turn. And this, the way it uh, scales uh, to the breakpoint, so rank 3 of the ability, it reduces the damage taken by 3. And then rank 4 and 5, it increases the speed by 1 each. So it is... Um, Speed 1, you can stop pretty much any attacks on the flip coin if someone is going to match you on the speed. So I don't think you can have speed 0. Uh, and taking 3 less damage, yeah. That being said, I don't think you need to go all the way to rank 5 for this one. I think rank 3 is going to be perfectly fine. And his final ability is Devour. So it's a 6 speed and 2 cooldown ability. Eat your lowest health Murloc and gain plus 5 plus 5. So every two turns you can eat one of the Murlocs that you have. Presumably Murlocs are known to be tokens. So I assume there's going to be one that spawns like tons of tokens. But what's interesting for me is the scaling on this ability. So rank 1 is plus 5 plus 5. Rank 2 is plus 10 plus 10. Rank 3 you gain the stats of the Murloc you ate. And you still eat the lowest health Murloc to gain the stats. That's very interesting. <clears throat> because you can have Murloc bigger than 10-10, obviously. You can also eat another Mercenary, <laughs> potentially. And then it's just going to gain some speed. And I would like it to lose one of the cooldowns, but I don't think that's going to happen. So every three turns you can eat one Murloc to just get enormous. I think there's going to be some interesting combos with this, and I'm definitely going to be looking into Murloc comp. And what I think is going to be quite funny, because we know there's only three Murloc mercenaries, I think there's going to be a very good leveling PvE uh, comp. So you build your three Murlocs, and then put some small characters behind them, and then they level up as you just use your Murlocs to, to obliterate your opponents. I think that's how it's going to be done. Uh, that being said, they said four speed on this is not too bad, but at the same time they would need to kill your tokens, I guess, for it to matter. Not too sure uh, how important the speed is going to be on this one. 
For his equipment, we have Iridescent Necklace. Scaly Taunt makes this Merc take one less damage this turn and scales up to three, so taking six less damage is suddenly very worthwhile. Uh, next equipment is Pearlescent Scales. After a Merloc dies, uh, this gains plus one, plus four. And then it scales all the way to plus two, plus five. Oh, sorry, plus two, plus ten. So when you eat your Merloc, it also dies. So this is going to proc as well. So eating the Merloc gives you its stats plus plus two, plus ten. Which makes this grow fairly quickly and become fairly tanky. And then you just taunt up and then eat again and taunt up and eat again and taunt up. And I guess that's how you build up the attack so you can get that devouring attack to gain more attack. But then it's essentially a win more situation, so I'm not sure about that one. And his final equipment is just Earth and Armor, which gives you plus 2, plus 4, and it scales up all the way at plus 5, plus 10. It's just passive boost. So rather than be 875, you are 1385. It's not bad, but if anything, I think the previous one is better. So it's hard to judge Mutanus. Uh, it's interesting, but it depends so heavily on another uh, mercenary. I'm just going to go after a Murloc dies. It doesn't need to be your Murloc from what we can see. So playing against Murlocs, he might be good. Uh, and Devour. I've Yeah, Devour eats your lowest health Murloc, so that doesn't help. I'm curious, can he eat himself? <laughs> now I'm curious, can he eat himself? <laughs> I don't think he can. At least he shouldn't be able to. If he's your only Murloc. Uh, but as far as the grade goes, I think he's decent, but I don't think he's amazing, especially there's not much Murloc synergies at the moment. He depends too much on other tokens, and again, the tokens on their own, we don't we haven't looked at them yet, and we're just looking at this hero, a mercenary. So I'm going to say that this one is B. It's old Murkai, so that's our second Murloc. It's another fighter. We don't have any protector from Murlocs, because they're known to be quite squishy. So this one is uh, at level 9. It has 3 attack and 9 health, which is quite a low health. Uh, quite a lot of health. Decent attack, though. Level 15, it's 6 attack and 40 health. And at level 30, it's 10 attack and 74 health. So it's a decent amount of health, decent amount of attack, but right down in the middle. Um, he's obviously going to be Morlock, so a lot of Morlock synergies we're expecting. So, his first ability is Finvasion. 5 speed, attack an enemy. One other friendly Murloc attacks it. Do you choose the Murloc? Okay, doesn't matter, you don't choose the Murloc. And I need to adjust my thinking uh, based on how this ability is worded. So, uh, how it scales is really interesting. So, it scales by increasing the amount of other Murlocs attacking it. So this essentially goes for the whole attack. Everyone attacks the one. And it goes to two, three, four, your other Murlocs attack it. So that in, that tells us there is more than five units we can have on board. So it might be the Halfstone seven, or it might be six, two rows of three. I'm curious uh, what it is now, because that is going to be changing a lot of calculations we can get. Uh, but yeah, this one definitely, if you go, if you're planning to take Murlocs anywhere, you do want the invasion to be as high as possible, so you want as many other Murlocs attacking the same target. Mostly of them, most of them are going to be tokens, obviously. Speak of the devil. We have our first token for Murlocs. Four speed, one cooldown. Felfin Navigator, Battle Cry, give your other Murlocs plus one plus one. It's an exact copy of the card. It's a 4 4 rather than a 3 3, I think. It might have been 4 4 as well. Uh, but obviously, as you rank up, both the Battle Cry and the stats of Felfin Navigators are going to go up. 
And I just want to point out that this also increases the stats of your uh, mercenaries murlocs. Which means that this Felfin Navigator is actually really powerful. So Breakpoint is, as always, rank 3, which it gives plus 3, plus 3. And afterwards, it only gains plus more health. So it goes plus 3, plus 5 is maximum. I still think it's worth it, because gaining more health, as always, in Murlocs is amazing. And it doesn't matter if you play Battlegrounds or if you play uh, Mercenaries, the health on Murlocs is going to be what's important. Uh, and quite often, probably, this is going to be what you're going to eat with your Mutanus. Uh, unless we're going to see some smaller tokens. Next one we have Giant Fin, which is definitely not small. Uh, so this one is 5 speed, 1 cooldown Murloc with Rush. It's a 6-6 six, six, and it increases the stats, that's my assumption. Uh, so yeah, it's some damage. If it survives, you can sacrifice it later on with Mutanos or it can attack again. Okay, so Old Merka is clearly going to be rotating between Navigator and Giant Fin because they're both on cooldown 1 and you just swap. You rarely use Finvasion unless you don't have any more space to actually uh, summon more tokens. Only then you use Finvasion. I must say I like that. And you're never going to really run out of space because you're going to use Devour every 2 turns, every 3 turns, every 3 turns because uh, it has cooldown 2. So you might actually run out of some space. I like it. it. It's very gimmicky, it's very murloc -y. They kill your old Murkai and you're done. Uh, so, his first equipment is Bubble Wand. If Invasion also gives this Merc plus 2 attack and Divine Shield. And all the way to plus 5 attack and Divine Shield. It doesn't matter, it's Divine Shield. You get Divine Shield, which means at least this Merc doesn't get a hit back. Um... With all the health and attack that you're also getting from the navigators, it's actually quite worthwhile. I'm not too upset with that. Navigator's amulet. Felfin navigator gives plus two, plus two more. And it scales to plus five, plus five. So it's plus eight, plus ten. Every other turn, you give plus eight, plus ten to your whole board. This is actually scary, because then you eat that guy, and your Mutanus becomes even bigger. And you keep on going like that. If you still have Giant Fin on board, you go the Navigator, and the Giant Fin got, just got plus 8 plus 10. It's a massive... Primordial Fin increases the attack of Giant Fin, so it can clear more, and it scales all the way up to plus 8. Um... So, Old Murkai is actually a rare, I just noticed. So, this is definitely a cornerstone of Murloc strategy. Old Murkai can run Murlocs on his own just because he keeps on spawning to uh, tokens. If you're going to have a town that can self-heal, uh, Garrosh, for example, is quite decent in that point. I think Old Murkai can easily run Murlocs on his own. It's really, actually, really interesting hero. Or mercenary, sorry. It's a very interesting Merc. It has low stats early on, gains better stats at max level, and definitely that Felfin Navigator is what I'm looking at for him. Felfin Navigator build might be what it takes, and then when you build up your field you just go for Invasion. But you do need another Murloc hero, and Mutanus is an epic. So this might be a difficult build, but old Murkai... I think that's a bit more than Mutanus does. Mutanus is a good taunt, because uh, it reduces damage to itself. And Mutanus got a B, Old Murkai. I think Old Murkai is going to get an A from me. That depends. It's an A with asterisk, because it depends on how the stats scale on the tokens. If Felfin Navigator scales to a decent stats, let's say 2020 then yeah this is going to be definitely an a because it's not going to be that easy to take our next hero on the roster is a ratorian which is a fell god i can't recall where he's from so he's a rare fighter demon with level one being one attack 12 health level 15 being four attack 42 health 
and level 30 being 9 attack and 75 health. So decent amount of health. Attack it's on a bit lower side, so I assume he's not melee. But Felgouts should be melee because they're the taunty taunty things. His first ability is Blitzing Legion, which is four speed ability, attack an enemy, so it is a melee. If you control another demon, deal three damage to a random enemy. Okay, the way it scales, it just increases the damage steadily, so it goes all the way up to seven damage. It essentially makes a 16 attack. I, I'm not too convinced on this one. Like, 16 damage is not bad, but 7 of that damage is goes god knows where. And on that 9 damage, you get a hit back. I know that there is some interaction with demons gaining... I think Manroth was giving health, not attack. Huh. I might be wrong. There's definitely potential with Rhetorian. Uh, but let's look at the rest of his abilities. Next one is Hawking Overfiend. Which is 6 speed, 1 cooldown ability. Uh, rush, death blow. This attacks the lowest health enemy. Okay, so it's a 4 attack, 10 health, at level, uh, rank 1. And so after it kills something, it attacks again. Uh, again, it scales up with the stats. It's really difficult to say how the tokens are going to work. Hmm. Okay, and his final ability is Fell Command, 5 speed, 1 cooldown, Fell ability. Gain 1 attack, deal this max attack damage to an enemy. And it scales quite nicely actually, because it goes up to gain 5 attack, so every other turn, Rhetorian can gain 5 attack. So 14, 19, etc. And then can deal the damage equal to his attack to an enemy, I think you can choose the enemy. Without getting the hit back, which is... Yeah, it's actually quite nice. This ability is quite nice. It gives him some attack. He's not too bad with that. Uh, his first equipment is Demonic Ashes. Hulking Coverfiend has plus 4 attack, scales all the way up to plus 10. Okay. Makes it easier to kill some tokens. Definitely a PvE choice. Because then Hawking Overfiend can just clear some tokens quite quickly. Next we have Soul Gem. Fell Command also gives plus 4 health, scales all the way up to plus 10. So you can heal for 10 essentially every other turn when you gain attack. This is not bad for PvP, I guess. And Demon's Mark, passive whenever a friendly demon attacks, give it plus 2 attack. And that scales all the way up to plus 5. This is amazing! So this is uh, really, really good for demons. And for Ratorin himself. It suddenly makes sense why his ability was working how it's working. So I think for PvP, this is going to be your choice. The demon's mark is really, really good. I mean, the heal 10 is also nice, but I think Manorov deals with giving... Oh, maybe he gains health himself. Manorov was doing something with health and demons. But Ratorian can boost all of your demons. So melee demon comp. Yeah, I can see that, which means Kurtris might actually see some play in PvP. Okay. I'm quite interested now. Uh, as far as Ratorian goes, he does have that demon's mark. As is soul equipment. He doesn't do an awful lot. He doesn't have much survivability. Uh, over uh, hulking fiend, whatever that is, is an interesting token. Um, definitely something interesting that spawns more tokens uh, for the demon army, for the burning legion. He's solid as far as the rares go. I would say. Yeah, he's solid. I would say he's an A. It doesn't matter how the other fiend, uh, other hawking fiend, whatever he is, uh, is stacking, that demon's mark is going to be absolutely amazing. Whenever a friendly demon attacks, give it plus 5, which means that other fiend can actually go quite high on the attack. I quite like it. Yeah, it's going to be a great A. And the final mercenary in this episode is going to be King of the Beasts. 
Rexar, the half orc, half ogre himself from Outland, the Mok Natal. So he's a legendary fighter. With on level one, he has two attack and ten health. Level fifteen, five attack and thirty-seven health. And level thirty, he has ten attack and sixty-seven health. So he has very low uh, max health rate. He's definitely towards where Ragnaros is at 64, so expecting really strong abilities. So his first ability is Kill Command. Deal 2 damage, if you control a beast, deal 7 damage, uh, but deal 4 damage instead, and has 7 speed. It scales alright. I mean, it scales to breakpoint, rank 3, deal 8 damage, if you have a beast, 14 damage. And then it just gains 2 damage on each end. It's alright. It keeps that 6 damage difference at that point. Uh, dealing 10. Uh, or dealing 16 if you have a beast. Uh, it's a good ability. You need to have a beast, which you probably will do. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not unhappy with this. I'll put it this way. It's a good ability. You just need to be able to have a beast. Animal Companion! Oh god. 4 speed, 1 cooldown. Choose a beast companion, summon it. So, there's 3 beast companions normally in Hearthstone. There is Huffer, a 4 to boar with charge, which I assume here would have Rush. There is Leok, which is 2 for Wyvern with... Uh, effect that gives plus one attack to all your other minions, which would be really good in this build uh, in this game. And Misha, which is 4 4 taunt. If you can summon any of those and they scale stats and effects, mostly thinking of Leok, if Leok could give up to five attack, that would be ridiculous. If you can summon Misha uh, to just taunt for you so you don't take damage or you can protect stuff. Yeah, the Animal Companion can be quite useful. And his final ability is Explosive Shot. It's a 5 speed, 1 cooldown, fire ability. that deals 4 damage to an enemy and 2 damage to adjacent ones. And this scales quite nicely, because on the breakpoint it has 12 damage and 6 to adjacent ones. Or... At max, it's 16 damage and 8 to adjacent ones, which is actually still quite a big scale. Now, now I'm curious, because this is a fire ability, which means that it's going to be working with Ragnaros and his fire damage. So this can go quite high, this 19 and 11, and that's before we look at any criticals. This might actually be an inclusion in fire composition. I might have been already thinking about that. I might not. I don't know. You will see when I will be talking about my theory crafting and different versions of the compositions I'm thinking. For Rex's equipment, we have Swift Feather Bow. Kill Command is one speed faster. You can increase the speed by up to four, which will make it a three speed ability. It's going to be fast ability, so more likely that your beasts actually survive. Um, might help you finish something off. As much as I think this might be important, I'm not sure it's worth wasting an equipment slot. Uh, Huntsman Rifle, Explosive Shot deals one more damage, you can increase it all the way up to 4. Which means we can go to 20 and 12. Which is ridiculous because then you add the fire damage on top it's 23 and 15 yeah yeah this is this is my choice if i'm going for fire if i'm going for beasts it's probably mama bear's close so mama bear is a lovely card from battlegrounds and made its way all the way to mercenaries Passive, whenever you summon a beast, give it plus one, plus one, and it scales all the way up to plus four, plus four, which makes your Misha bigger. And if you have Lady Anaconda, for example, you can make that bigger, although you don't give it attack, you only give it health, which is technically the same as an attack, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, it's... 
Making beasts bigger, but then Rexer can summon his own beast every other turn and an explosive shot the other turn. I'm not sure which one I prefer, to be honest. Mama Bear claws are interesting. If you're going for the beast build. Uh, but I think protection or scaling from Leok, the important one I want to see is how Leok scales. Or if we get some brand new uh, companions for Rexar, which I doubt we will. I think it's going to be half a Leok and Misha. Definitely Misha, definitely expecting Taunt. So as far as Rexar goes, he's a solid hero, but he doesn't strike me as anything great. The explosive shot is amazing. Animal companion is amazing. Yeah, okay. Okay, he strikes me as something really good. Uh, but not to the up there level. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that. Rexa is going to be graded A. He's decent hero. Well, decent. Strong hero. You can fit him in a lot of compositions just because he can summon that taunt or he can buff your attack. He is half orc, uh, which I don't think is going to count as an orc for any purposes of for the horde, etc. Sadly. His stats are a bit on the lower side though, which makes me a bit apprehensive about him. Uh, so... I guess let's change that from... No, let's say it with A, because Misha can still make up for that. The first thing you do is just summon Misha and you're fine. And that's it for today, guys. So, that was the first part of the fighters for Hearthstone Mercenary. What do you think? Do you have any builds uh, already brewing? Are you interested in Murlocs? Beasts? Uh, what else have we seen? We have seen Illidan. We have seen some demon support. So we have seen some interesting stuff in there. What do you guys want to build? I'm going to be building stuff next week. So make sure to comment, like and subscribe to help with that YouTube algorithm. So we can actually keep on bringing you more content. As I said, this week we're going to be getting out the rest of the review of the cards so there's one more part for fighters and two more for casters we've already done protectors so make sure to check our channel for those and next week is going to be all of the theory crafting make sure to uh, subscribe if you want to be notified about our future videos and if you enjoyed the video please leave the like again it helps a lot with algorithm see you guys next day next time